When you have something to say, say it. But remember, we're in a battle, and the enemy is trying to jam the transmission. So spread the message, and run the race, and we shall see our leader. Well, my life is filled with songs, but I just could not get along without my friends. And I'm happy now, but when this good life ends, I know a better life begins. And love to you, Sir Stonehill, armed with your guitar, full volume on your amp. Oh, turn it up, turn it up. You're so crazy, but you know it. And I love you as we both crawl toward the lamp. With Clapton on guitar, and Charlie on the drums, McCartney on the Hawkner bass, Dear Bobby, watch your fears all hide and disappear while love inside starts growing. Ah, let it start growing. You're older but less colder than the jokes and folks you spent your childhood snowing. And someone died for all you friends. This song does not appeal to you. I hope his spirit slips on through. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. And if these words do not make sense to you, Hope his spirit slips on through. You know he loves you. This is Larry Norman. Before Larry was 16, he'd actually written 500 songs, and he's sometimes called the father of Jesus Rock. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Norman is singing from Sunday. Night. Come in, Larry. Nice to meet you. Hi. How are you? All right. That's a nice song, there. Thank Good you. words. Thank you. When did you first? Uh, what, you're about 16 when you first started writing songs, were you? Well, I was nine when I first started writing, but it wasn't until I was 16 that I had enough songs that mm. I could sing them anywhere. And what, what made you uh, sort of get into, uh, were you a religious boy to start with? Come from a religious family or what? Uh, no, not really. I'm still not a religious boy. You're not? No. I believe in Jesus, but I'm not. Uh, I think we're supposed to follow Jesus, and uh, a lot of people follow the church, and then they find themselves unhappy. Yeah. It's because they don't know Jesus. They don't really have a personal relationship at all with God they just have a some kind of relationship with the church oh I see you're saying you're away from the traditional church idea of Christianity uh, you, yeah you have, to go, you have to go beyond the church go right to Jesus yeah, yeah. you were the original well, Jesus boys that's a oh, bad word oh I mean word, Jesus rock music or something yeah yeah I'm not a Jesus freak but no. uh, I sing Jesus rock actually when you first um, first started a lot of your records were banned weren't they yeah what was the reason for that uh, the idea of Jesus and rock and roll music wasn't commercial uh, uh, yet. You know, three or four years later, it became commercial. Mm -hmm. And the church wondered, what's this all about? God uh, and rock and roll, they don't mix. Yeah, which is, <laughs> which is wrong, they do. You know. And what about, also, you've had a bit of bad luck with management and all that sort of thing, haven't you? And with your records, they went underground. You never... Uh, well, everybody, ripped off everybody has trouble with management. Yeah, it's so hard to get good management these days. Uh, yeah. We're certainly in another land out here, aren't you? Yep. It's a lot different in America. <laughs> Do you like Australia? Well, I keep expecting to fall off because it's down under, but the gravity, <laughs> the gravity works here too. <laughs> I see you, because you've come at the right time. We're going to. I'm an American. No, but they reckon you go blind if you look at it. You mean, you mean, I had to. Oh, I wanted to watch. I thought if it's the last thing I'll ever see, I want to see the eclipse. And it will be the last it thing. It will I'll be the see. last thing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> you look very young. How old are you? 50. 
Fifty hours. That's tremendous. It's cosmetic surgery. Cosmetic surgery. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get tonight, Larry. I wish you all the best. Thanks very much okay, for coming tonight, you, Larry. I wish you all the best in your tour, especially at uh, Dallas Brooks on uh, Sunday night, 24th. That's this Sunday, and then Campbell Civic Centre on the 27th. Have a good time in Australia. Okay. Bye. Thanks, Larry. Larry Sipping whiskey from a paper cup. Drown your sorrows till you can't stand up Take a look at what you've done to yourself Why don't you, you put the bottle back on the shelf Yellow banger from your cigarettes Put your hands are shaking while your body sweat Why don't you look into Jesus He's got the answer Problems on Valentine's Day. <laughs> you still looking for a perfect lady to run away? You think rock and roll will set you free? You'd be dead before you're 33, just like me. You shoot and jump till you're happy. Broken needle in your purple vein. Why don't you look into Jesus? He's got the answer.
15 years, five minutes, now, is it safe? Is it safe?
was raised in the church, and uh, the summer after I turned 16, I, I really committed my life to the Lord on a Continental Singers tour, and came home all fired up and excited and ready to serve the Lord. Was real excited about music, and uh, you know, was ready to be tapped, and I wanted to do something for the Lord, and I'd been singing all summer. And halfway through my senior year, a group of us began to pray and meet early for school, um, my senior year of high school, and pray, and just see what the Lord would have us do. And one morning, a guy walked up to me in the prayer meeting, and he says, I found this record, you've got to hear it. And I took it, and I looked at it, and there was this uh, long, blonde figure <laughs> flying across the cover. I took it home, and I listened to it, and I loved it. My mom wasn't too excited about it, but I loved it. <laughs> about five years later, in the midst of the Jesus movement, a bunch of us drove uh, from Los Angeles to Sacramento, California, and partook in a, about a three or four mile march through the capital city there in the state of California. And I stood with these 10,000 Christians or so on the steps of the Capitol and listened to our next guest sing, I wish we'd all been ready. And from that time on, this man has written incredible songs that have inspired all of us. I think of 666, I think of He's an Unidentified Flying Object, I think of Why Does the Devil Have All the Good Music, I think of I Am Your Servant. And I think that his music and his inspiration is really responsible for a lot of us being in this industry. I know it's true in my own life. And I'm very honored and very pleased to introduce to you tonight a man whose music has had a great impact on me. Would you welcome? Larry Norman. George, score, score I wouldn't have messed with it, but it was stuck in the rug with the pin pointing straight up. Uh, gosh, this week, I say I haven't been around for a long time. I haven't even been in this country all the time. But after this week and after last night, what happened in here? And, and did you hear Ann Kimmel this afternoon? And, and can meet him now, you know, I, I've decided I'm going to quit. <laughs> I'm just going to quit. It, uh, I woke up this morning and I thought, there's 12 notes in an octave. It, isn't there 13? Isn't that what they always said? There's 13? There's 12, because that 13th one is a repeat. And I, don't, I have only thought about this for a few hours, so... <laughs> But God must have made it 12, because he likes that number a lot. He has 12 tribes, 12 disciples, and to, to make a decision, you're supposed to have 12 people. 12, what is that, a, a quorum or something like that, or is that the political thing? You have to have 12 people. He likes that number. I think God created music. I think he made it, I think he made it just the way he wanted it. I've, I, I've been listening to some of the kids trying out. I, I just don't know how they had the guts to compete. I'd just be terrified. I have never tried out or competed, and I just want to say you're very courageous wherever y'all are. And uh, I just want, also, I, I'm glad I wasn't asked to be a judge, because I ended up falling in love with everybody while they're singing. And some of them weren't singing as good as others, but they were beautiful. And they were talking about Jesus in between, you know, before and after the song. I just, it was lovely. Anyway, think, if you get some ideas on that 12, just let me know what it, what it is. I cut my hair last week. And uh, it's not to be in style. Somebody asked me, is that your new image? I have a little baby. And every time I leaned over to kiss him or play with him, my hair went <laughs> right in his face. 
And uh, it hurt my feelings when I'd say, hi, honey. He'd go... <laughs> so. And I was, last week I thought, well, I did it, you know, maybe I made a mistake. And I was feeling really out of it. And then I came up here and I saw everybody's great clothes and their great hair. And I thought, I got to do something. I look like that little boy in the, 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 the paint can. <laughs> the... So, so I just thought, what can I do? I don't know what I can do with this. I put it behind my ears and I borrowed some spray and I stuck it there and I thought, this looks like Planet of the Apes. <laughs> and, and just a while, when that group got up there and and saying, I realized I have the new haircut. <laughs> so at last, after all these years, I'm finally with it. <laughs> uh, I want to say to you kids, uh, and, and everybody else that wants to be in music or is in it halfway or in it all the way, just don't forget that it's not how perfect you are, and it's not if you make some wrong notes, and it's not if you write some bad songs. It's, it's Jesus. If, you don't, if, you're not letting, if you're not listening to God, you have nothing worth saying. And don't be worried about your music. Don't be worried. About, does God want to... Look, if he's called you, he'll make you get into it, and he'll make it all work out. If he hasn't called you, you'll find out after a little while, and then you'll find out what you're supposed to be doing. So don't worry about it. Music was given to us by God to enjoy. It wasn't given to us to put on plastic. It was given to us to enjoy and to sing to our sheep at night when they were afraid of the coyotes howling, and to sing to our, our relatives when we went, you know, five days climbing over hills to get to their tents, and to sing to them about our little children and stuff. That was what it was for. And... It just doesn't matter. If you love Jesus, he can, tra he can multiply you like he multiplies the, the fish and loaves and like he multiplied the, the efforts of, of fishermen. And n now look, you all know more chords than I do. And you, some of you people, when you sing, you have that vibrato thing. So just be confident. I just, I was so inspired listening to y'all sing, and I just want to say, be confident. If God is with you, nothing's going to be against you. And to stop this idea crossing over. If God wants to send you into enemy territory, you're probably one of the ones that don't want to go. And he'll equip you with the weapons to uh, withstand not only the temptation, but all the, the hatred. You know, the, he promises us if we love him and if we talk to people about Jesus, they will hate us because they, they hate him. They, that's a guarantee. So if you're going to cross over, then you're only going to have one. <laughs> and, and just don't, if you do for some reason get to cross over, don't. Go there and think, well, I'll just be cool. I won't say anything about Jesus for a few albums. And then when I'm really big, when I'm successful, then I'll talk about, talk about him. And then I'll really have influence. It's not true. I think Bob Dylan showed us that. It doesn't matter how much they love you. The minute you talk about Jesus, they decide they made a mistake. And don't have this idea that I'll just be like a spy in enemy territory. I'll just be, keep it a secret. And then, uh, then when I'm Barbara Streisand or something like that, then, I, then they'll have to listen to me. If they want to do the interview, the, that's, that's the wrong thinking. That's like if I be lifted up. I will draw all men to him. And that's wrong. It's if he's lifted up, he will draw men. And it's okay if you only have one album. It's okay if you only have one good year. It's okay if you're only on TV one time. It's all right. You're supposed to be storing up treasures in heaven. If you got one shot at it, really do it right. Witness to your friends at school, you know, don't say, well, I'll wait till they're in a better mood and uh, uh, do it now because they might move. <laughs> they, they might move, you know. They... I, when I was growing up, 
I never went and talked to my grandfather very, very much, and, I'm, and now that I'm older, I wish I could. Uh, I was just too busy playing, because I, I was a kid, and I know God understands that, but I, I felt guilty for a long time that I didn't, I didn't give him time, you know. My, my grandmother died about six days ago. She's, she's happy to be gone. You know, her body was like a prison. It didn't work too good. She's 86. And she's, she's where I want to be. And Keith Green is where I want to be. I like being here now. I used to, people would say, do you have any goals, you know? And I'd say, yeah, I want to die. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm married to a wonderful woman, and I have a little baby, and I don't want to die this week. I, I just want... <laughs> Love changes you, and children change you. And if some of you are thinking, gee, I won't be a good parent, because I'm so selfish, well, you know, don't decide. What, don't decide what to do with your life every step of the way. Maybe you pick out the songs for your albums and stuff, but maybe some child wants to come down here and teach you that you're not so selfish, and that you're, that you're not too old to have kids. I'm gonna be 40, and my little baby's making me feel young. I feel good, not right now, but I feel good. <laughs> When you first begin your journey, you're not sure of who you are. And the lessons that you're learning, they don't seem to take you far. And you just can't keep from stumbling, though you try so hard to stand. And the truth can be so humbling when it's just beyond your hand as though youth were my invention as though love lay undefined to stay free was my intention to stay young and unconfined so i held my pride above you Oh yes, what a fool was I Holding back those words God loves you And letting out that word goodbye And I was wrong to let you go I was a child I did not know about the love that we both could have given and now you're gone so far away i hope i'll see you again someday but if i don't i hope i'll see you in heaven I was foolish in my younger days To think they'd never end Life confused me with its changing ways I could not comprehend All the meaning in those moments Now lost like footprints in the sand And I'm standing here remembering but it's so hard to understand And I was wrong to let you go I was a child I did not know about the love That we both could have given And now you've gone so far away I hope I'll see you again someday, but if I don't, I hope I'll see you in heaven.
Does anybody know this song? Something about sitting in the garden. Can you tell me what it is? And I sit here in the garden in the middle of my days. My mem memories fade and harden. I didn't plan that. As the years they slip away. I didn't plan that. <laughs> well, I'm not crying now. <laughs> I keep looking at this mirror At the age around my eyes Time is such an earnest laborer Precision is its neighbor Lay my body in the ground But let my spirit touch the sky Well, I was wrong to let you go. I was a child. How could I know about the love that we both could have, should have given? And now you're gone. You're gone so far. And someday, but if I don't, I hope I'll see you in heaven. If I don't, I hope I'll see you in heaven. Well, if I don't, I hope I'll see you in heaven.